We've had skater boys, skater girls, and now there are more, more women over 30 than ever taking up skateboarding. Yeah, numbers have been growing for the last three years and even more so since the success of the sport at the Tokyo Olympics. Our reporter Johnny O'Shea has been to meet one group of women in St Agnes. So pump your legs when you start, that's it. Lisa and Katie are two members of a growing group of women in their 40s and 50s who have taken up skateboarding. Why should the kids have all the fun? <laughs> yeah. They're having lessons every two weeks at the Mount Hawk skate park. Age is just a number. Just get on and do it. Life's too short to not try something new. And, yeah, it's just a fear of failure. You just, just go, I'm just going to give it a go. And, you know, you can find a local trainer in a local park. Yeah, and just, just don't be afraid to try. It's good fun. Nice. Lean back. A lot of them have, like, backgrounds in surfing, so they're kind of familiar with the board anyway. Uh, so they know their stances and they're quite stable in their balance and stuff like that. And they're fit, fit women, do you know what I mean? So they can, they can take on skateboarding, no problem. Skateboarding was an Olympic event for the first time in the summer, with 13-year-old Sky Brown winning a bronze medal for Great Britain. We've been told that um, skate parks have seen about a 24, 25% increase in people coming to the skate parks over the last 18 months, two years. Um, and certainly um, there were queues outside skate shops um, earlier in the summer, and a lot of them girls um, sort of skateboarding and wanting to start skateboarding after the Olympics. I'd watched Sky Brown this summer and I bought my niece and nephew skate kit, um, not realising that I'd be taking it up shortly afterwards. As Coach Zane shows them what can be done, it might be a while before they're pulling off tricks like this, but they're determined to stick with it. It's much harder than it looks. Johnny O'Shea, BBC News. Right. Well, we're joined now uh, in the studio by professional skateboarder Lucy Adams, and we can also speak to Sarah Brownlow, who's a skateboarder in Brighton. Uh, good morning to you. There's lots of things at play here, aren't there? I think lockdown people took on new skills. The Olympics, there was a massive boom. But this has been building for some time, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, so I started the She Shredders group years ago now, must be over five years ago, which was a, a weekly session for women and girls in Brighton. Um, and sort of in amongst that, other sort of social networks have started to increase and things like those groups have started to be like a frequent thing and lots of skate parks calendars. So, um, Sarah, tell us how you got involved because originally you, you weren't a skateboarder, you were a photographer, weren't you? And you kind of yeah. discovered the joy of the board, explain. Um, yeah, so I lived, I just moved to Bali for a year with my family in 2017 and um, I was a music photographer and there wasn't that much music out there for me to photograph and someone told me to go and check out Pretty Poison, which is a skate bowl nighttime kind of music venue and I was a bit sort of just blown away by it and I got sucked into the scene then from a photographic point of view and my son started skateboarding he was six so I was like the skate mum that just sat around and all the other mums moaned about it but I was loving it and just would take photos and just watching or and then we came back to the UK and um sitting around watching in cold skate parks is not quite the same so um I decided to just start skating with my son um and then uh, randomly through work met uh, Ricardo who I think set up She Shredders with Lucy um, and he was promoting his mental health skate program so we got chatting and then kind of one thing led to another and ended up learning with him a bit and then going to BYC the indoor place to the She Shredders um, and I just became incredibly obsessed with it really quickly and it's kind of taken over my life really and um <laughs> I wanted to share that with other people because I teach as well and I've been a photography teacher since forever, like 2005. And Can I ask why you became yeah. obsessed? What was it about it that got you good? Uh, well, I think I, I'm really drawn to um, the physical side, but also the mental challenge of yeah. skateboarding. Um, the Yeah, I, I really buzz off that mental side of it of trying to work things out and just keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. I think for me, back in three years ago, um, there really wasn't that many females in the skate parks, not, not in the outdoor ones. I barely saw any. Um, and I was really conscious that I was old because I started when I was 40. 
and I was really conscious that I was female and that I was rubbish because I was new. Um, so I was really driven to get good quick to try and shake off some of that um, internal self-consciousness, which I was feeling. Um, that, that must be... Sorry, sorry to interrupt, Sarah. That must be that must be easier said than done, Lucy. Mm. To get good oh. quick. I mean, what 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 do you need? To me, I mean, I, I don't think I can even stand on a board without toppling off if it was moving. Uh, what do you need to get good? Obviously, there's some core elements like the balance. Um, but like Sarah said, it, it's that feeling of getting closer in your mind and breaking those little bits down, and then being excited enough to to go for it again because you want to make it. And not only that, it's such a social kind of friendly thing that actually when you've got that environment and the vibe is good, you've got your mates around you, people are progressing, that helps mm. you come up. So it's about building that environment and having that place, which is sort of like somewhere like She Shredders offers. And also, Lucy, I tried it recently. What I liked about it, and Sarah sort of touched on it there, is when you are focused on it, you're thinking, what do my muscles do? Where do I put my leg? How do I stand? It's like a form of, oh, here's me trying it. Wait till you see my flip. You'll be well impressed. <laughs> I've seen the flip. Um, that, that you're not thinking about anything else. And so it's like sort of having a rest, isn't it, in some ways, from the stresses of life? Yeah, you can't... You've got to focus 100%. And so the time is flying by oh, and you you're just thinking, I want another go. Oh. It's my next go. It's my next go. Um, and you I just... Found it you've got, great, I found you've it... got great style. Thank you. But I did. I found it weirdly restful. Yeah. yeah. Now I, I come away from a session and it could have been two hours and I've just... Yeah. Where's that time gone? I'm yeah. still trying the same trick. Go on, so Sarah, you were going to say something. Um, I totally get that. Nothing switches your mind off more than skateboarding, I think, even though your mind is so focused on what you're trying to achieve. And that's why I really like it. It's such a break from everything. And that's why I think this um, mental health side of it is so important mm. because it really does help people um, take them away from some of the stuff that's really busying their mind and then that's it they're focused they're connected by the community and they're supported and championed hopefully by their by their network and that's why it's wonderful Lucy, that it is women who are slightly older it's not girls picking them up for the first time as teenagers mm. it's women of our generation who are, who are getting involved it's yeah. fab. sarah thank you very much indeed thanks for taking the time to talk to us from brighton you. this morning lucy great to see you here as well Nina, you could have been, you too. could have been part of those statistics of an over 30 taking up skateboarding but you're too young aren't you so that this is it. This is it.